Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Travel Mug Podcast. We are so excited to be joined this week by Crystal Richard, a very successful entrepreneur and beach glass maven. I've gotten many a piece of advice from Crystal about beach glass. She's also CEO of Crystal Richard and Company, which is a global digital PR firm, and also her own travel and lifestyle brand, which is East Coast Mermaid. Crystal, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so fun to be here as a publicist for a change. <laughs> I know you get yes. to- you're you're the one who's actually here. Yeah. I guess, yeah. As a publicist guest, but normally yeah. the publicist is always the one pitching. We never get invited. So this is so exciting. <laughs> well, we are thrilled to have you. So before we sort of dive into to your businesses and whatnot, first and foremost, of course, this is a travel podcast. And we know that you also love to travel like we do. So having said that, we would love to kick things off by hearing about some fun places you've traveled. So like favorite destinations, least favorite destination, and maybe some like bucket list spots you still need to go. Oh, yes. You caught me at the perfect time for the bucket list question, too, because I totally had it like moment last week. So favorite places. I mean, oh, gosh, I've been fortunate to travel a lot over the years. I was an only child, so I somehow weaseled my way into a lot of conferences with my parents from a very young age. Hawaii. I mean, Hawaii, I've been a few times. It's amazing. I can't wait to go back with my husband one day. Um Peru, I was very fortunate two years in a row. I was working with a client from Halifax called Unleash Surf and actually got to go down down to Peru for multiple weeks, two years in a row. And so that was really cool because Peru wasn't like I did the Paris thing when I turned 30 and that was something I had wanted to do my whole life. And Mm -hmm. I was single at the time and I thought I'm going to treat myself to a trip to Paris. But Peru kind of was never on my radar. My best friend basically was like, if you don't go to Machu Picchu, which was her dream, she's like, I can't be friends with you. So I was like, (laughs) okay, I'll plan this whole other detour from where I was going to do the Machu Picchu thing. So that was definitely one that kind of like caught me off guard. But then other favorite destinations, Las Vegas. I lived and worked there after university, but I started going there when I was 16. Again, conferences, great opportunity to bring your teenager to Vegas. Um, (laughs) So that's a place that I love. I love going back to Vegas. It's one of my favorite girls trips destinations. My mother and I love it. And close to home, Maine. It's such a simple, no one ever thinks of Maine, but Maine's actually one of my favorite states in the U.S. And again, it's only a couple hours from us here in New Brunswick. But I would say those are, those are a few of my favorites. Bucket list though, ones I'm really excited about. I'm very excited to eventually get to Italy. I've never been to Italy. That's a bucket list with my husband for sure. Same as Alaska. That's another one that we're both really excited about. The one I said you caught me at a perfect time when I I recently, for those listening, got my wisdom teeth out and I was in a, you know, post anesthetic drug induced haze and spent two hours on YouTube watching videos about the Drake passage and going to Antarctica uh, right. And I kind of haven't stopped thinking about it. And when I went back to the dentist's office on following my appointment a couple of days later, I'm sitting in the the room waiting to see the doctor to say, you know, why does my face still hurt so much? And on the wall is literally this giant mural of Antarctica. And I'm like, it's a sign. What? It's I a know. Sign. <laughs> because I didn't notice that when I went in for the appointment. Wow. But then when I was back, I was like, weird. Yeah. And it's just kept coming up. And I actually have a friend from Graham and Ann that works on the boats and does kayaking expeditions and all that stuff down there. So it's, it's my, like, it's my new thing. Yeah. And then when I turn 40 next year, I want to go to galaxy edge at Disney. That's like, oh, so fun. So fun. <laughs> I can help you out with that one. <laughs> I know you can. And I've like planted the seed with my husband. I'm like, I know we're not going anywhere as fun this year because we're spending all our money on our reno, but I turn 40 next year and I would like to go to Disney to go to Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yes, that is Jen's department 100%. And it's so funny that you say Drake Passage because there was a side of TikTok there for a minute that was all Drake Passage. And I'm yeah. like, how have I gotten trapped on this side of TikTok? <laughs> I don't even, didn't even know the Drake Passage like as an excursion, let's say, yeah. existed. And I'm like, how did I get here? So it's so interesting that now like someone I know has actually said the same thing. So, <laughs> Well, and it's funny because I had never really heard about the Drake Passage or the Falkland Islands and all these places, or you, you, I can't even pronounce it, the place that you fly to to go on the boat. Right. And like I said, my friend from Graham and Ann, she regularly, oh, right before the holidays, they called her up. She flew down to do a two week contract on one of the boats. And I just, these were words that she was always saying. And I was never, I was just like, I don't know, I don't need to go to Antarctica. <laughs> 
And then <laughs> I don't know, like I said, something happened. What someone I follow from Tofino on Instagram was doing the whole trip and I'm, you know, gauze and miserable in my mouth post wisdom tooth again on Tylenol threes. And I'm like, this looks fun. Yeah. <laughs> Straight passage. I don't get seasick very easily. So I was like, I probably hack this. Yeah. So so yeah, we'll have to have a follow-up episode when I finally somehow pull this off. In oh the yeah. Next couple years, but can't yeah. wait to watch that adventure. Yeah. It's now the new thing. Yeah. <laughs> I it's like the this is a dream that I've had since lunch and I'm not giving up on it. <laughs> <laughs> but some of my best ideas have literally stemmed from those types of things where I was like I had zero interest in this last week but now I've decided to commit to it a hundred percent now it's my life's journey literally like literally and I can say this as a fellow like entrepreneur like self-employed person that is a trait of a self-employed person of just like yeah oh now like this is the path I'm going so yeah. Oh yeah. I even was joking with my husband at dinner. He was like, so like, or what are you going to talk about? I was like, I'm definitely going to talk about Antarctica. Like, like, this wasn't even a thing until last week. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, I know, but it's happening. It's my personality find- now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I need to find my people to come with me because like he can't, he doesn't even like boats. Yeah. You're all- Dr. Ashley Margison also is like, I am in, Let's but go! Girls, trip. Like, girls trip will rent the whole boat. It'll be awesome. So yeah. Cause all, all right. my well, travel buddies, wait. yeah, my travel buddies can't do the Drake passage. Like he will, he will never go on the Drake. Like I showed him one TikTok video and he was oh. like, no, you can find yeah. someone to go. Yeah. I'll watch you guys from afar and, and, and cheer you on. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. So like we said, we're, we need to thank you because you have sent some truly amazing guests our way. So Alicia from Secret Nova Scotia and Rolling Sea Tattooery, we love her. And Sue, take it outside. We had a super fun episode with her too. So talk to us about your, your digital PR company. Like how did it come to be? What led you down that path kind of thing? Yeah. So in keeping with, I set my mind to do something and then it happens. Mm-hmm. I was working in an agency for five years in a PR agency. I was director of PR. And in that like last year of being in the agency, I was kind of starting to feel like I'd hit that point that I'm like, I'm helping make someone else's dream come true. I'm working with clients. Some of them I loved and some of them I was like, I would not have signed up to work with this company if it was me making the decisions. Yeah. And when it's your bum on the line, trying to get media coverage for a company, you want to a believe in that company and b have someone that, you know, you can get coverage for, because you're the one reaching out to journalists and saying, I believe in this company, you should write about them. And when you're not the one having those sales calls, it was like, I just found that I was in a hamster wheel. I wasn't happy. I worked more and was more burnt out when I worked in an agency than I ever have as a, as a self-employed entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So January of 2017, I wrote down that by the end of the year, I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted my own little PR company. And then two months later I made it happen. (laughs) So because it was my journey. Yeah. So it, the business just turned six and I work with congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) I know. I really, I did actually celebrate this time. I don't usually celebrate. I kind of just, I'm like, oh, it's another anniversary. But when you look at stats about how, you know, most small businesses don't make it past five years, I was like, okay, this is, this is a big milestone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I work with small businesses, brands. I've worked with big businesses, nonprofits, basically to help them get media coverage. So whether that's getting them on podcasts, getting them into Forbes, on TV, on morning shows. I have a blast doing it. It's a lot of just sending a lot of emails and either getting crickets or having people say no, but I still love it. And (laughs) it's been really, it's been a really fulfilling journey to this day doing that. Excellent. So, you know, what have you found though, when you do think back over the six year journey you've had so far, what's been the most challenging part of sort of running your own PR company? What sort of surprised you the most, I guess, maybe what you were thinking entrepreneurship was before when you were working for the other organization versus maybe now that you're in it? Yeah. So I think the the hardest part about having a PR company is how much is out of your control. So I have a client right now that is amazing. They're doing so many cool things in the weight loss space. So they're actually helping women lose weight in a way that works for them. They don't have to make a different meal than their husband's. 
they were on CTV Morning in Halifax and the girls loved them. And they literally blew up their socials. They passed 10,000 followers just because one of them went on Instagram. and was like, hey, CTV doesn't have 10,000 followers. We should do this. Like they are so fun. But because they have the word weight loss in their business and what they do, I know that a lot of the pitches I send to people, they're like, they see weight loss and it's like, oh, it's just another weight loss gimmick, right? Yeah. And so, and I'm someone that I've, you know, I've had my bad experience with Weight Watchers back in the day. Like I genuinely am like, these guys are a breath of fresh air, but no matter how much I believe in them, I'm at the mercy of journalists and what they want to do. And when you find that one journalist, that's like, yes, I see that they're different. I see what they're doing and it's amazing. And I want to write about it. Then you're like, party time but so much of PR for every client not just them for every single client you are at the mercy of a journalist their editor what their workload looks like what the current media landscape is you could have the best pitch and strategy for a campaign planned and then you know there's an election there's a natural disaster and everything just gets shut down there's a pandemic so that was that was a really fun one was trying to pitch clients during a pandemic So I think the hardest part of having a PR company is that so much of it is out of your control and you are really, there's so much pressure on your shoulders to make this media coverage happen because that's what people are paying you for at the end of the day, but you can only do so much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So switching gears a little bit, we know that you also love your home province of New Brunswick. I actually just booked a trip sort of to... New Brunswick just for like two nights, but we're, we're going to Maine to do our Nexus interviews at the end of May. So we're going to do a little bit of New Brunswick exploring. So I'm excited to talk to you. It's yeah. like, so, um, we did do an episode way, way back. Right, Megan? How long like ago? Two, like 2021. What is time? But I think I don't even know anymore. <laughs> anyway, why New Brunswick is not the drive through province. So I'll link that in the show notes if you want to go listen to Megan's experience in New Brunswick. But what do you want people to know about New Brunswick and why should people visit? That we are not a drive through province. Yeah. But I think the problem with New Brunswick is, okay, so I'm going to be completely, like I'll be fully honest with you. I love coastal New Brunswick. Mm-hmm. You put me in Fredericton. I am not a happy person. <laughs> <laughs> No disrespect to Fredericton. I have lots of friends there that I love. I don't like being landlocked in New Brunswick. And I think one of the problems with when you think about this idea of drive by like drive through province, when you're coming from other places, the places that you're driving through, you're not necessarily driving through the coast. So if you're going to Ontario, you're going through that awful, you know, middle of the province highway that you've got to worry about a moose jumping out in front of you. There's nothing to see. Like, it's not exciting. And so I think people, because they've driven through, they just think there's nothing to see here. Same thing with Moncton. I live in, I live in Dieppe, but Dieppe, Moncton, um, it's fun. It's funner if you go 10 minutes, you know, towards the ocean and you end up in Shidiac or Capilé right. or Book Tush, or if you keep going down to St. John and to Charlotte County, which is like my favorite part of the province. So I think what people need to know is if you come to New Brunswick, you need to actually get off that main drive through route that everybody talks about and actually start exploring. Because once you start going to places like the Hopewell Rocks, I had someone from Ontario just message me this week. She's so excited. She saw them on Pinterest and found my blog and she can't wait to go see them. And I was saying that to my husband. I said, you know, we take it for granted how cool the Bay of Fun Day is. And it's yeah. literally in our backyard. Yeah. Um, Wales, like we have places in New Brunswick that you can sit on a bench without having to go out in a boat. Well, maybe you go in a boat to get to the island, but you can sit on a bench and watch whales swimming by in front of a sunset. Yeah. There's very few places in Canada that you can actually do that. And so I think there's little things like that that people don't realize. And then, I mean, there's our seafood. Our seafood is legendary. We have some of the best caviar, sturgeon caviar in the world. And I don't think many people even know that. I honestly didn't know that until a couple of years ago. We have the King of Caviar, Acadian Sturgeon and Caviar Company in, out of St. John. He has a very sustainable and ethical way of getting the wild sturgeon out of the St. John River to harvest for the caviar, re-releasing them so that they can keep populating and keep giving us more caviar. But people don't know that. So no. yeah, there's like so many little cool things between the Bay of Fun Day and the, the nature and the whales, sea glass, all, I mean, there's sea glass other places too, but <laughs> it's pretty darn good in New Brunswick. So yeah, that's like my challenge to people is 
if you're just looking at what you're driving through to get from point A to point B, you're not going to see the magic. You have to go off that main travel route to really see the magic. I have to, I have to say like, I completely agree. And that's a great way to describe it to people because it is a drive through province. If you just stay on the highway, like it literally (laughs) is, but to see the beauty of it. And I think that Atlantic Canada as a whole reflects what you said about New Brunswick and it is the coast. And that's what people should be searching for. Even during our episode about New Brunswick not being the drive through province, we even spent some time in St. John and, you know, not to be rude, but St. John doesn't get a great rap. And we had a lovely time. Like we had yeah. a very enjoyable stay. And and I, and I think you're right. Like that's a really great way to describe it. It can be if you don't get off the highway, you know? And Maine is the same way. If you're driving through Maine to go to say Boston or somewhere like that, if you just stay on the interstate, you're going to think Maine's not that impressive, but if you actually get off and go to the beaches and the coastline, it's amazing. You've got lighthouses, you've got, you know, places like Mount Desert Island and Bar Harbor, you've got Ogunquit, Kedabunkport, like all those places. And so people are so, they fantasize about places like Maine and Cape Cod and all of those types of places, Martha's Vineyard, but Atlantic Canada is very similar. You just need to get off those main highways to find the gems. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, if you judge any place by its, like, interstate or, like, mm. like you're just going to be like, why am I here? But yeah. when you actually go explore, like, small towns and beaches and kind of find those those little hidden gems, then it's, yeah. then you know that it's worth visiting. So are there any New Brunswick hidden gems that you can share with us for people? Oh, my goodness. Know? So... <laughs> Okay, so I would have to say, so I mean, and I know I know we're probably going to talk about that more extensively. You know how much I love Grand Banana Island. It still blows me away when I meet people that are like, where? What? That's yeah. a thing? Like, you know, and it's it's kind of crazy because it's literally off the coast of Maine, actually, when you look at a map. So it doesn't even feel like you're in New Brunswick really anymore. Right. But Campobello is a hidden gem that I will admit I only went there for the first time in 2017. I knew nothing about Campobello until we went absolutely fell in love it is a sea glass haven like haven if you or if you love sea glass like you're anyone that goes to Campobello and says I didn't find a single piece of sea glass did something wrong like they just didn't go on <laughs> they didn't look down they, yeah they didn't look down because it, they thought it was falling from the sky or something because <laughs> it is impossible to not find sea glass on Campobello I can't um, wait <laughs> yeah so that, that's a definite hidden gem. The other hidden gem that is fairly new, so I, I like to make sure I tell people about it because not everyone knows about it, is our Funday Trail Parkway. So that actually starts in St. Martin's. And as of now, you can actually, I think it finally connected through to Funday Park. If not, that's opening this year. But it's this like 30 kilometer plus, kind of like the Cabot Trail, mm-hmm. but it's scenic views. You can pull over. It's accessible, which I think is amazing. Like you can get the, yeah. the stunning Vista views literally by pulling your vehicle over. So if someone's in a wheelchair or they're elderly and they can't, you know, do a hike, you can still see all of these epic views. And if you do the Funday Trail Parkway, you get easy access to the Walton Glen Gorge, which a lot of people don't know about, but it's actually the Grand Canyon of New Brunswick. Yeah. I hiked it. I'm not an avid hiker. I'm trying to this summer because I want to do the Funday Footpath next year when I turn 40. Right. But I did actually hike the Eye of the Needle hike a few years ago with a friend before the Funny Parkway was a thing. So you actually had to park your car in the middle of nowhere, hope it was still there when you got back, follow <laughs> these really sketchy signs and find your way down the like scaling a cliff into this Eye of the Needle, which was so cool. But yeah, like that, again, I didn't know about that until Instagram. It was kind of one of those things I saw it on Instagram and I was like, what's this? This isn't in New Brunswick. So yeah, we have our own Grand Canyon and people don't talk about that or know about it. So pretty cool. Yeah, we went there. It's It was cool. We didn't do that hike. We just literally followed the road in from the visitor center and did, right. did that hike in. It was uh, mostly flat ground. It was not yeah. tough. It's like a kilometer or something to get in there. And the views are spectacular. And you do forget you're in New Brunswick. You're like, how, how is this possible? So, and it's definitely a hidden gem. That's a great one. Yeah. It's the same as if you're on Grand Manan Island, the Southern Head Cliffs at the end of the island. I'll never forget the first time. The first time I brought my husband, it was foggy when we got there, which is unfortunately common. You can have sun on one end of the island and you get there and it's 
completely bogged in. <laughs> so he didn't really grasp how big it was. And then we went back the next day and it was clear those cliffs are very similar to, you know, when you see those cliffs in Scotland and Ireland or even Hawaii, like I have sunset pictures from there that if you didn't know any better, you'd think it, you were in Hawaii and you can be standing there and have humpback whales going by puffins flying over like it's insane and again you just you don't think you're in New Brunswick so that's Definitely. the thing I think if you think of New Brunswick as just you know like Moncton St. John Fredericton you really don't even scratch the surface on how much we have to offer once you get off the beaten path mm -hmm. yeah a hundred percent which very good segue because you recently purchased a property on Grand Manan Island. So talk to us about how that renovation's going and your plans for the amazing spot you purchased in the future. Yeah. So that was a big, again, I'm, I'm really noticing a trend with me saying I'm going to do something and then somehow doing it. I like um, that. Well. <laughs> I, so I first went to Grand Manan 20, I think it's 22 years ago now. I'm losing track. I've had a number and I think I don't, I don't think I've kept adding a year since I started <laughs> telling the stories. I went in high school because I was actually going to go to Dal. I started out in marine biology at Dal, like any other teenager from the nineties. I went there in 2002. So I was coming out of the nineties, going to be a marine <laughs> biologist. And my parents wanted me to see whales. We had been to SeaWorld and stuff when I was a kid in the 80s, but my parents knew, I think we all knew from an early age that whales in captivity were, was not a cool, cool situation, right. even though we didn't really know better in the 80s. But by then it was like, hey, you need to see whales in their natural habitat. And so we went to Grandma Ann and we went whale watching and I just fell in love, kept going, um, brought my husband four years ago. He doesn't like boats. <laughs> so bringing him on a 1.5 hour ferry ride was really fun. And they did a safety drill that day and he got locked downstairs and wasn't allowed to move. And I was upstairs and we didn't know it was a safety drill at the time. Mm -hmm. So I literally thought like, he's never going to want to come back here. Like this is it. <laughs> That's and terrible. We were, we were still dating at the time. So I'm like, we're going to have to break up because I can't <laughs> date someone that doesn't love this place as much as I do. <laughs> And then four years later, we we bought this place. So we we got married in 2021. And I, I literally joke, we got married on August 6th. We were sitting and having brunch a couple of days after the wedding. And it just sort of looked at each other like, okay, so what do we do now? And I said, well, we could like maybe start thinking about a grandma and cottage. And he was like, yeah, like we could do that. And a year later on August 5th, we closed on the property on grandma and Like it was, awesome. could not have planned that better had we tried so yeah it's been fun it's been a lot more work than we thought I say I say fun it's it's been a stressful ride but we ended up doing much more of a renovation than we had ever planned and ripping out wait because it's like HGTV right you rip open a wall and you think you're just going to fix one thing and then you find a million more problems and uh, we have a really awesome team on the island of carpenters and expert contractors that have been helping make our life a little bit easier, which has been amazing. And so we're really excited to have it as a cottage, but I'm excited to continue to evolve the East Coast Mermaid brand. And one thing that I really want to do is start having some intimate retreats for women who want to feel like a mermaid, who want to go whale watching and sea glassing together and walk the beach and have bonfires under the stars. One of the things I've really noticed since I created East Coast Mermaid is that there is a need and a want for these types of events for women of all ages. When we go to the sea glass festival in Campobello, it's just, it's like having a bunch of sisters from different mothers that have never met before, but put them all in a place talking about sea glass and you're sharing stories and you're crying and you're hugging and I want to start recreating that. And so I'm really excited to be able to have our own place there to sort of use as a, as a headquarters for these types of events and hoping to do the first one this, this fall is the plan. So awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. It's just going to be nice because we go there so much anyway, it'll be nice to have our own place and yeah. Are there I've never been, so I might have to take you up on one of those retreats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. I have so many people that message me and say, you know, I read about Graham and Ann on East Coast Mermaid. I want to go with you. I've actually had people I know that have said, if you're ever, like, if you ever want to go, but you don't have someone to go with you, like, I'll go. And so I, I was like, okay, well, I can't, I can't just, my whole life can't just be taking people to Graham and Ann. But then I thought, what if we did something like that, where I could have, you know, a group of people that want to experience it like I do and watch the sunset where I watch it and go whale watching with my friends that have the whale watching company. 
and do the whole thing together how cool would that be and then you make friends for life so that's that's kind of what I'm really excited to to bring to life but obviously have to get some renovations done because we haven't actually slept in the property yet so gonna check that off first and then we'll start planning stuff yeah before you're inviting people out there we should have a have a place to sleep Um, we've mentioned east coast mermaid a couple of times so it's a travel and lifestyle brand tell us more tell us more about it (laughs) so east coast mermaid so i mentioned earlier you know i was I was burnt out. I was working in an agency. So East Coast Mermaid came to life in 2016. I think that year was a bit of a transitioning for me in that I met my now husband at the end of 2015. And that winter, you know, we were getting out, we were exploring, we were going to the beach a lot. I just sort of was really starting to feel myself. And I was like, okay, like, I, I feel like there's a bigger calling for me to do something really cool. And I wanted to do something that was mine. And I think that was like the first step in working for somebody else that I was like, I'm helping you make your dream come true, but what am I doing to make my dream come true? And so I love New Brunswick. I grew up on the beaches of New Brunswick ever since I could walk. I've been sea glassing since I was a little girl. My mother, you know, she taught me how to sea glass. I can't even tell you how much sea glass we probably threw out in the eighties and nineties, because back then it was just cleaning the beach. Um, you'd save like the bottles, like the bottles you'd save, but everything else is like, Oh, this is junk. Now it's like, this is the most perfect piece of blue. Why would we throw that out? (laughs) But that was my life. Like I grew up, my parents raised me at a cottage on the ocean in the summer in New Brunswick. And so I just thought, you know what, I'm going to just start sharing this coastal living and all these destinations I love. So I basically went on 99 designs and paid $400 for a logo, which I almost threw up over. Cause I, at the time I was like, that was so much money. What am I thinking? Like I made the worst decision and it worked. It turned into a blog. We put the logo on some tank tops and started selling them. Cause my friends were like, well, maybe if you put the logo on a tank top, you can make the 400 bucks back eventually kind of thing. And then that kind of spun into a merchandise line for the brand. I'm excited to, we're going to pivot a little bit this year and actually start doing some more giftware and things like that, that I'm really excited oh. about. But yeah, it's it's evolved and it's really become a go-to resource for all things planning your trip to New Brunswick. And I my little tagline is, is I help you develop a coastal crush on New Brunswick, but I really do focus on the coastal regions and the seafood and the sea glass and the sea views and all of that that New Brunswick has to offer. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. So where can people follow your adventures? Because they're obviously going to want to go follow along now. So. <laughs> yes. Where, where can so people I, find you? Where can people find me? So <laughs> eastcoastmermaid.com is the best spot to go for the blog. We have a lot of content planned for this year, including guides to all of my favorite spots. So every year we refresh the Grand Manan Guide, the Campobello Island Guide, the St. Andrews by the Sea Guide. I didn't even talk about St. Andrews, but that's another place that I'm just obsessed with. We got married there. It's very near and dear to my heart. And we're also going to be publishing a lot of different guides. Like we have a fried clam guide. So if you're coming to New Brunswick and you want to know the best places for fried clams, that's like one of our best like best posts of all time is that people lose their mind over the fry clam post. And we also have a newsletter. So you can, if you're on the website, I definitely encourage you to sign up for the newsletter because we send out a lot of fun stuff, everything you need to know about planning your New Brunswick trip. You can also find me on Instagram at East Coast underscore mermaid. And that is where I have a lot of fun and post all kinds of fun sea glass videos and things about my pet seagull all that I, it's not really my pet, but I like to pretend Carl. pet. Carl. <laughs> yeah. So that, those are like the two best places to find me. That's, Awesome. I'm so excited that we got to like sit down and chat with you and uh, rather than like just over email, <laughs> it's really nice to, to sit down and chat. So thank you for coming on. And so that's all we have this week. We recently launched our little merchandise. So we want to tell our listeners that there's an exciting contest but here's what you have to do. It's for the month of April. So what you need to do is leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and then you need to screenshot it and send it to us either on Instagram or Facebook so that we know to enter you in the contest. So when you do that, we'll enter you. We're going to draw at the end of April, and it's either going to be for a mug or t-shirt. You get to choose, and it'll get sent to you. So Leave us a review, screenshot it, send it to us. 
and we'll enter you in for the draw. So we're on Instagram and Facebook at the Travel Mug Podcast. And then you can also support the show by buying us a coffee. So we'll put that in the show notes. You'll get some fun bloopers. Not that we ever make mistakes because- no. We're perfect. And if we would super appreciate it if you would share the show with a travel-loving pal. And we will talk to you again soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.